Hello everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, we are going to be looking at the 2022 Senate elections. And right now, where it stands today, April 26th, I believe, who is going to be well, taking control of the Senate after, to the, after the 2022 midterms. And more importantly, who's going to win these key swing races. So, before we get started... Please take a moment, if you are not already, to subscribe to the channel. Around only 10% of my viewers all time are subscribed, so, you know, it, it would be a huge help to me if you were subscribed. Uh, so, go ahead, do that. Um, if you're not going to, I guess there's nothing else I can say, but we should get right into this video because I can talk about these Senate races for ages. I could do that, you know, I sometimes do that, and I think we should get right into it because I'm assuming you guys want to hear about Senate races, but not for three hours. So... First, they save Democratic states. I, I don't really want to talk about these too much because they're not competitive. They're not that interesting. There are some that are on the edge, um, but I think right now, uh, 45 safe, Dem safe Democratic states. There are going to be 46 safe Republican states. The safe Republican states are a little bit more debatable. Um, or I think 44 safe Republican states, my bad. The safe Republican states are a little bit more debatable, like Kansas, Missouri, Iowa are all kind of on the edge, and you can make a debate about South Carolina and Indiana. So, you know, and it depends on the Democratic candidates. Like, in Kansas in 2020, the Senate race was likely, but the Democrats, that was an open seat, and the Democratic Party had a pretty good candidate in Barbara Boulier. So, again, we're going to have to see who the candidates are. But as of right now, there's not a reason to expect any of these seats over here to be competitive. So now moving on to our likely states, these are states that are, that are going to be more competitive. I think that there's only one likely Democratic state at this point in time. That's the state of Colorado. I think that Colorado is going to stay with the Democratic Party because of its significant Democratic shift. I mean, it went from a state that, that was regularly Republican. George W. Bush won it twice. Uh, and then Obama flipped in 2008, and then 2012, it was listed as a key battleground that, in fact, most actually had Mitt Romney winning Colorado in 2012, uh, fun fact. But uh, since then, it's been pretty blue. I mean, the Republicans did win a s Senate race there in 2014, but since then, that Democrats, you know, in 2016, Clinton won it by five, but... You know, since then, Dem Democrats have really been well. And Hillary Clinton, she had a pretty bad performance there for a Democrat. Uh, and, you know, uh, this was a state that the Democratic Party won a Senate seat by, I think, 10 or 11 in 2016. They won the governor's race by 13 in 2018. They won, uh, Biden won the state by, I think, 14 in 2020. So it's shifting to the left pretty rapidly, especially in the Denver uh, suburbs area. So I think Colorado, well, I, don't, I don't want to talk about it too much, but the state should stay with the Democratic Party. Now, the Republicans, Alaska is going to get really messy. I think that Lisa Murkowski is going to get primary, and I think she's going to lose that primary. Now, she could actually get, get into the, to the race as a write-in candidate, like she did in 2010, where she where she didn't win the Republican nomination, but she ran as a write-in candidate and actually won that election, surprisingly enough. So, this race this race is a hot is a hot mess. I don't want to touch it yet because it's so complicated, especially with ranked choice voting. It's kind of uh, really discombobulated, and I don't because I've I've misjudged the state of like I want to take accountability. I've said things about Alaska politics that weren't very smart. You know, my Alaska takes in the past have not been takes that I'm that proud of, and I've had people correct me in the comments. You know, saying you know. Uh, because I remember one in one video, I talked about Alaska for a little bit, and I forgot about ranked choice voting. So I think that you know, I, I'm I'm not going to talk too much about Alaska till I inform myself about it to 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 the point where I feel comfortable making a call on it. Now, for other states, that may not be the case. For other states, um, I do have the audacity to make a call on these states, but I think Alaska, I'm I'm going to leave alone for right now. Now, going over to our leany states, or actually no. Uh, not yet. Uh, Ohio, I think, is likely Republican. It, there's an interesting Republican primary there between J.D. Vance, Jane Timken, and Josh Mandel of the three J's. You can call it, or you can just call them the Republican primary of Ohio. I, I, I was going to say something, and then I realized that uh, it, it, it was not clever. You know, I sometimes do this where, like, I try to be funny, and I end up either uh, having to cover myself up or it just ends up not being funny like right now where I start a sentence and I don't know where it's going. But nevertheless, going back to this uh, Senate race in Ohio, I think that Ohio is, 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 is a state that the Democrats should really start to abandon. And to be fair, I do think that Sherrod Brown's going to win 2024. I don't want anyone to put words in my mouth. Uh, Sherrod Brown's going to win 2024. You heard it here. You heard it here three years early. Sherrod Brown's going to win 2024. Nail this into your brain. He's going to win. But other than that, it's it's pretty bleak for Democrats in Ohio. I mean, the Republican Party is probably going to gerrymander it. 
uh, th- those congressional districts. Tim Ryan's going to run for Senate and probably lose by 5 or 6%, uh, and he'd be lucky to lose by under 5 just to put that out there. So, you know, in an open seat where it's going to go to a very Trumpian-type candidate in all likelihood, I expect Ohio to be a likely Republican. Uh, and then, you know, Florida is kind of in the border between lean or lean and likely, but I'm going to put it as likely. I think I was originally kind of uh, less bullish on Rubio than most, but I think after after thinking about it a little bit, I, I just think Rubio is going to probably win by somewhere in between 5 and 7%, not the 4 or 5 margin that I originally said. You know, it's possible he, that he only wins by 3 or 4, but... You know, right now, I wouldn't necessarily bet on it. I think that Stephanie Murphy is a strong challenger. She's probably going to run for governor or for Senate there. Um, but she's just not strong enough in a state that, you know, there was a poll that I mentioned on my Twitter account, which you should follow. It's at Unbiased Electy 2. I need to, uh, uh, okay, for the record, I need to change the handle. It's a terrible handle. Like, I need to install the app on iPhone. But uh, essentially, uh, there was a poll that came out the other day. Uh, or it's the other day. I think it was yesterday. That was a sample that oversampled de- registered Democrats by six percent in a state that Trump won by three, and they came out and said that Ron DeSantis had a net fourteen percent approval rating. Do you know how insane that is? A poll that conducted pl- a, the plurality of the people in that poll were Democrats, and they still approved of Ron DeSantis by double digits. That is insane, and, and if that indicates anything, it should be that DeSantis is, is going to carry Republicans down ballot, whether it be in the Senate race, in the House, in the in the Republican Party of Florida for 2022, they should feel very, very confident where, about where they are right now, and I think in 2024, people have talked about Rick Scott potentially losing his seat. I think Rick Scott's going to win re-election in 2024 as well. So, moving on to our lean Democratic states, we should take a look at first the state of Arizona, where... Um, the, the, there have been a, a couple new candidates that have come into the race, most notably um, Mark Burnovich, who is the uh, current attorney general of the state of Arizona. He is also notably more moderate. He did not object to the election results on behalf of the state and uh, really w- is kind of a moderate candidate. Now, this on the surface seems like a good thing for the GOP, you know, help them in the suburbs, help them maybe the urban areas, help them in a state that's pretty moderate overall. And I think to, to a certain extent, those people are right. But we are taking a Republican Party that has been hijacked by Donald Trump and a very nationalist, populist movement that is very – it's it's hard to see why voters would prefer a very moderate, not necessarily anti-Trump, but not pro-Trump candidate like Brnovich over someone who could be you know more right-wing in a primary who would – Maybe be stronger in a primary, but would not uh, be stronger in a um, in a general election. So I think the Republicans in Arizona, their especially their party as a whole, is just not very good at winning elections. So I think that Arizona is a state that the Democrats. I think Kelly's going to hold Arizona, and I think that the state is going to stay blue for the time being. Now in Nevada, I just want to you know I could talk about Nevada for a very long time and for an unhealthy amount of time, but to be short, I think that. I think that we should be we should be talking less about Judith Whitman being the chair of the Nevada Democrat, uh, Democratic Party. She was the chair of the Clark County Democrats, which was like 80% of their coalition. People are freaking out about that. We, we should be talking about the fact that Catherine Cortez Mosto is a very strong incumbent. And she is going to, I, I think she's going to win as of right now. She, she has Hispanic support. She did very well in Clark County in 2016. She did so well in Clark County that even though she, she that even though she lost Washoe, she was still able uh, to win that race in 2016 in a year the Democrats did not do very well. And um, so I think that Catherine Cortez Mosto, with her uh, ability to just have that insane Hispanic turnout that's going to be critical in the midterm, I think she's going to hold the seat. I'm confident in her chances. And, you know, the Republicans are probably, gonna, are probably going to run Adam Laxalt, right, who lost the 2018 governor election to a meh candidate. So I don't think that uh, Laxalt, you know, after being rejected by Nevadans in 2018, is, 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 is going to run and uh, to run successfully in the seat. So I think the state of Nevada is going to stay with the Democratic Party for the time being. Now, this could change, you know, like if we see new polling or new data. And by the way, th- this seat would be, the Republican Party would be favored here if Brian Sandoval, who is the former governor, who was super popular, ran. He's not running. So that, so Democrats, so, so, so the night that he announced that he wasn't going to run, the Nevada Democratic Party slept easy. Now, going over to our lean Republican states, 
Uh, I'm only gonna put um, I'm only gonna put one here, and that is the state of New Hampshire. I think as of right now, Snoo is favored. Not I'm I'm less bullish on him than I was a month ago or maybe two months ago, but he's still a candidate that has tremendous appeal to the Democrats. He still has crossover appeal, and you know against someone like Maggie Hassan, where the polls have been definitely favoring Sununu. I think that he is he would be favored to win by a lean margin, four to five percent. Again, he, his the crossover appeal that he has, you know, Democrats he he won his governor election in twenty twenty with two thirds of the vote. And I know that governor elections aren't everything. You know, people are going to say, well, you can't. You know, look at Steve Bullock. New Hampshire is a swing state. Montana is not a swing state. Steve Bullock only won by five points in two thousand and sixteen in his governor reelection bid. You know. Chris Sununu, he won with two-thirds of the vote on the same ballot as Joe Biden. So I think that for that reason, I'm more confident in Sununu than I was. Now, to be fair, I did. I was more confident in Steve Bullock than most. There were times where I had the race as tilting Democratic. I understand that. But I'm far more confident in Sununu than I ever was with Steve Bullock. Now, let's go over to our tilt Democratic states. And I think that we're going to take a look at a few of these. First of all, Georgia, in my opinion, is the most uh, solid for the party of these of of these seats. I'm going to cl- classify for them. So I think Georgia is a state that the Democrats, uh, they're Raphael Warnock is a pretty strong incumbent. He's not weak, but he's not like uh, an electoral juggernaut or anything. I, I think he's going to win re-election. I think the suburbs are just too far gone here for the GOP to win unless they run a phenomenal candidate. And you know, Herschel Walker could be decent for them, but not inspiring enough to make the suburbs revert or to and, you know to get the the, the black sh- the share of the black vote that the GOP needs so I think that uh, Georgia is going to stay blue right now but it's it's competitive and I think that Warnock is definitely the most vulnerable of the Democratic incumbents behind Maggie Hassan who I have losing now our next till the state is the state of Pennsylvania I think Pennsylvania is a state where the Democrats are gonna have a very interesting primary between John Fetterman and Malcolm Kenyatta but with that being said, I don't think it'll be too divisive. I, I think it's going to be interesting for sure, and I look forward to covering it. But I don't think that it's going to be divisive enough to make this state uh, be a go back into Republican hands. Mostly because this is a state that Biden won, despite Trump having insane working class support, insane rural support, and you know he didn't do great in the suburbs, but they're not really going to revert back. So, and if they, you know, it's it, it's really unlikely that they revert back. So, I think that, uh, you know, whether it's Fetterman or Kenyatta, I, I, I bet on it being Fetterman right now. I think that they're going to outrun Biden. I think they're going to win by around two percent, which is why the state is is debatably a lean D state. But I'm going to put it in tilt to be careful, and also because we're kind of close. So, going over to our last tilt D state, Wisconsin. You heard me right. Is going to be tilt D. This is a state that the Democratic Party is, uh, I don't know why I keep, this is a state where the Democratic Party, I think the Democratic Party of Wisconsin has done a very good job over the past few years. They haven't been amazing. I mean, they lost a winnable Senate race in 2016. Hillary Clinton lost state in 2016. But, you know, Tammy Baldwin, she won re-election by 13 2018. They flipped the governor's mansion in 2018. Joe Biden won the state in 2020. It was a key part of his coalition. So I think that Wisconsin for right now is is, is going to be a, a, a seat that the Democrats are going to hold because Biden won it. And, you know, because this is a state where the Republicans have, have really maxed out their support in a lot of areas. In the rural, they're doing pretty well. Now, if the turnout, they can get better turnout, but in terms of margins, they're doing very well in the rural areas. The wow counties are trending to the left. The wow counties are kind of exurban slash suburban Milwaukee, and they're still pretty Republican areas, but they're trending to the left, and they're big counties. So, you know, like even a 1% to 2% swing to the Democrats really helps their cause here. So I think that especially... Trump did so well with the working class, the Republicans really have nowhere to go but fall with the, these voters. So I think that I'd expect Wisconsin to stay or to, to flip the blue, especially Ron Johnson, who's voting like a like, like an establishmentarian conservative from the South. That doesn't appeal to these populist working class voters in Wisconsin. And the, the Democrats found their candidate, Sarah Gudlewski, the treasurer, who have been mentioning, you know, I, I, to be, I don't think people were covering her enough, and she's a strong candidate. So Sarah Gudlewski. Uh, right now is probably the front is the front runner for this nomination. I think that she's going to win and be the Democratic nominee in the state of Wisconsin, and then beat Ron Johnson. So, fifty-one seats for the Democrats. North Carolina is the last, and I was waiting putting it in lean, but I'm but I, again like like Pennsylvania, where it's close to being lean. Same with Georgia, actually too. I'll just put it in tilt. I think that the Democrats are going to run Sherry Beasley or Jeff Jackson. It's really a toss up between who they run. Uh, certainly not Erica D. Smith, but I think it'll be Beasley or Jackson. If I had to bet right now, like, like if you. Uh, like if you dragged my feet to the fire and told me that I had to pick someone, I would probably say Jeff Jackson. I just think he has better name recognition. And, and you know, I think Beasley would actually be a better candidate. I think she'd get better black turnout. 
Uh, and also, she's held statewide office before. She was the f- former chief justice of the North Carolina Supreme Court, and she outran Biden and Cunningham in the state, although, you know, it's kind of redundant for me to say that she outran both of them because Biden outran Cunningham, you know. But anyways, she outran Biden uh, in, in the state. She did better. She only lost by, like, 0.1%. So she did lose, but she lost by, like, what, 87 votes or something like that. That's probably not that amount, but she lost by, like, just a couple votes. It was she, – she, she came really close to winning re-election there. So – you know, unless Roy Cooper runs, I think she's the Democrats' best bet for flipping the seat. But I wouldn't bet on it right now. I just think Mark Walker with the Republicans is a good candidate for for the time being. I think he has appealed to both the suburbanites and the Trump voters. Now, if the Republicans ran someone like like Pat McCrory, that it could be a different story. It could be where the Democrats would be favored here. But as of right now, I think that this state is going to stay with the Republican Party. So that's it for the Senate prediction, guys. If you enjoyed, please do leave a like. Like I said at the beginning of this video, if you're not subscribed already, please do hit that subscribe button. And if you really enjoy my videos, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. So that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.